a sample contains 50 grams of radium-226. 5,000 years pass, six and a half grams remain. What is the half-life of radium-226? So half-life is our buzzword. That tells me we're looking at a problem in radioactive decay. So we write our equation down. A of t equals a zero e to the c times t. So here, we're gonna to need to solve for the unknowns, a zero and c. Okay, first, let's take a look at t equals zero. If I put a zero into the equation, we're gonna get e to the zero, which is equal to one. So we're gonna be left with a zero, and we know at t equals zero, the amount is 50. So a zero is 50, so that's taken care of. Now, what else do we have in our equation? I have at t equal to 5,000, we have six and a half grams. So that says six and a half is gonna be equal to our a zero, which we now know is 50, times e to the c times 5,000. We move the 50 to the other side. I have an equation that has an exponential in it. So I'm gonna apply natural log to both sides. Natural log of e to the anything collapses to your anything. So I have 5,000 c on one side, the other side, I'm looking at natural log six and a half over 50. Go to my calculator, I get minus 2.04. So we're gonna wind up, when I clean things up, C equals minus 2.04 over 5,000. Okay, as a check, I want the minus sign in there. Okay, if I'm looking at an exponential equation that has positive exponent, over time, that's gonna grow. Okay, E to the X grows over time. If I have a negative exponent, it's gonna get driven down to zero, which is what we want for decay. So you think of that as being e to the minus x, the graph of that just shoots down to zero as we go off to the right. Okay, back to the question. What's the half-life of radium-226? So let's think about what's going on here. At t equals zero, I have 50 grams, one half-life passes, we're gonna have half the material. So that's gonna mean 25 grams. The equation for that's gonna look like this. Okay, and when you get good with these half-life problems, you don't even need the amounts. You just need to know that you're solving your exponential equal to a one-half. So you think of this thing over here as being just the multiplication factor as a certain amount of time passes. So if you start off with a given amount A, you just hit it with this guy that gives you your no amount. Okay, so I wanna solve this for T. Same trick, we apply natural log to both sides. It's gonna collapse natural log E to this mess here. And then I could just do the algebra. I get T equal to 1,699 years. We could check this. So the idea is gonna be, I just let a few have lives pass and just see what happens to the amount. If I wind up getting in the ballpark of 5,000 years, my amount should be in the ballpark of six and a half. Okay, so we let one half-life pass. I'm gonna start t equals zero at 50. So I'm at 1,699 years, half of 50 is 25. I let one more half-life pass. So our t is gonna be 3,398. We take one half of 25, that gives me 12 and a half grams. I do one more half-life, that gives me 5,097 years. Take one half of 12 and a half, gives me 6.25 grams, and we know that's close to our six and a half grams. All right, you'll note it's a little bit less because we overshot T equal to 5,000 years. So that's 100 extra years for this thing to decay. So we expect this to be a little bit less than our six and a half, and we see that it is. Here's another look at the problem. In this case, you may have memorized the formula for radioactive decay as A of T equals A zero, your initial amount, times one half to the T over the half-life. This is a little bit more natural to think about than our usual exponential decay formula. In this case, what are we doing? Our exponent here is just counting the number of half-lives, putting it over one half. This makes a little bit more sense. If our time is equal to one half-life, our exponent's equal to a one, so we just wind up multiplying by a half. 
If two half-lives pass, well, it's gonna give me an exponent of two. We multiply by a half of a half, which is a quarter, hit that against our initial amount, and that's where we wind up. So here, this reflects this business of half-life passes, keep cutting it in half over and over and over again. Okay, so more natural to think about. Now, disadvantage, if we go from first principles through the differential equation, what happens? When we solve, that's how the exponential comes out naturally, and it may not be so easy to see how you go from the one-half base to the exponential base. Okay, so in this case, the relation is, if I wanna get rid of the one-half base, well, what's the rule? I take e to the natural log of one-half, that's equal to one-half, and that gets me back to base e. Okay, so there's a trade-off here. Now the solution's a little bit more straightforward. I'm not gonna to try to solve for C, I'm gonna go directly to our answer. So we know with the amount of time that's passed, 5,000 years, we have six and a half grams. That's equal to our new equation of 50 times one half raised to 5,000 over our half-life. I take the natural log of both sides. Okay, we have base one half getting hit with a natural log, not a problem, let's take a look. Okay, on the other side, we're gonna have what we would usually get, the natural log six and a half over 50, gives you minus 2.04. On the other side, I have my natural log of one half raised to the 5,000 over the half-life. My rule for natural log says that 5,000 over the half-life, it's an exponent, I can bring it out in front. And now I just have to worry about natural log of a half. Okay, again, there's an exponent in here, natural log of a half, that's natural log of two to the minus one. So I bring the minus sign out in front, and now we're looking at natural log of two. So when we solve for half-life, I'm gonna get 5,000 natural log of two over 2.04, gives me 1,699 years, which agrees with our other method.